welcome to all the school of agriculture at the indira gandhi national open university offers a program called pg diploma in food safety and quality management under this program there is a subject called customs act and in the part in the part one of the lecture we have seen uh, all other important aspect than the important export procedures in the part of the lecture today we are going to see the important export procedures to begin with let me give the scheme of the presentation the schema presentation will start with the import procedure under that there are two categories that is the procedure to be followed by the person in charge and the procedure to be followed by the importer and thereafter we will move to the export procedure again under that there are two type of procedure to be followed one is the procedure to be followed with the person in charge and the procedure to be followed by the exporter first and foremost we should understand who is the person in charge the person in charge may refer to the master of a vessel or a ship or in the case of uh, aircraft the person in charge may refer to the pilot in charge or commander of the aircraft or in the case of train the person in charge may refer to god or conductor of the train and in the case of vehicles it may refer to the driver so that is what the definition of the person in charge is concerned then person in charge is responsible to ensure that the submission of import and export manifest is submitted and also to ensure that the conveyance come through a proper and approved route under the law and the third most important thing that the you should ensure that the goods are unloaded or loaded at proper place after the return of the order obtained from the customs authorities now we will move on to what are the procedure to be followed in the procedure of import procedure first of all as and when the goods arrives within the territory of india then the person in charge of the in search of the vessel or aircraft or the train or uh, uh, the any other uh, vehicle they he should inform the custom authorities stating that the cargo of reached the uh, within the territory of india then the shipping or airline sends cargo arrival notice to the consignee of the goods giving details of the date of the arrival of the consignment and the details of vehicle etc thereafter the import manifest in case of vessel or aircraft is to be submitted period to the arrival of the vessel or aircraft so that maximum formulations are completed before a vessel or aircraft is arrived generally uh, it is provided under the law the importer can initiate submit this information about this importer export manifest 30 days before the arrival of the vessel or the aircraft if the import or manifest could not be submitted within the stipulated period the person in charge is liable to pay penalty of rupees 50000 rupees then the grant of entry invest by the custom officer is very very important in that case then the unloading of the cargo from the ship or the aircraft as the case may be can take place only after the customs officer grant the entry inverse order and this date of entry inverse order is very very important and this date is for the determination of the applicable custom duty level of the uh, levy uh, on the imported uh, goods then the carrier responsible for shortage during the unloading uh, uh, that has to be say you know, brought to the notice of the custom officers then it was held that tally sheet prepared by the port trust authorities on unloading of the goods is a statutory document and that alone will be relied if there is any discrepancy between the document submitted by the person in charge or by the prepared by the customs authorities then we are moving towards these are the procedure to be followed with the person in charge the vessel or the aircraft and now we are moving towards the procedure to be followed by the importer in this case first of all the importer should submit the bill of entry to the customs authorities then it should be submitted in the prescribed format provided under the law and it should be submitted in in four copies original copy and duplicate copy will be held for used by the customs authorities 
and the third copy of that uh, uh, bill of entry will be for the benefit of the importer and the fourth copy is meant for the bank for making the payment or the remittance. Now, the what are the type of bill of entry? There are uh, various types of bill of entries, first three types generally and the, 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 the first of all it is refers to the board bill of entry for home consumption. Home consumption means it is the goods are to be uh, 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 utilized within the country of India. Then the, uh, uh, it is issued when the imported goods are to be cleared on payment of the full duty. That the two, two things are important under the board of uh, bill of entry for home consumption. Number one, it should be meant for the consumption within the country and there it should be cleared on payment of the full duty. The next category of bill of entry is called the bill of entry for ex bond clearance. In this case, or it is used for clearance from the warehouse on payment of duty and printed in the green paper. Whenever the exporter wanted the goods immediately, then he will make the payment. Thereafter, he will take the goods from the port. Then that is called the ex bond clearance. And the third one is the bill of entry for warehousing. In, in some cases, the importer may not be uh, requiring the goods immediately. In such cases, the importer can, after arrival of the goods, can store the goods in the warehouse without payment of the duty on bond. Uh, he should give a bond for that. But as and when the goods is required, then he can pay the, the duty, then get the goods cleared, then he can take it from the, uh, the port for his own uh, uh, say, uh, internal consumption. Then the rate of duty for the clearance for warehouse is very, very important and because the rate of duty applies as prevalent on the date of removal from the warehouse, that is the relevant date for uh, levy of the duty as per the imported goods are concerned. Then making reference of the business identification number on the bill of entry is very, very important. It is a 15 digit code based on the PAN number of the income tax. Then there once that uh, bill of entry is uh, submitted, then it should be filed with the customs authorities. The bill of entry is filed with the customs house agent or on behalf of the importer or the importer himself can file it. There are several documents are required to be submitted to the customs authorities by the importer to enable them to the primarily the filing is for the purpose of checking the goods, whether it is in good condition or in order. Then also it is necessary for deciding the value and the classification of the goods. And the third is also very also important to ensure that the import is legally permitted or the goods imported are within the legal framework of the country is concerned. Now we are moving to the assessment of the duty and the clearance. After that filing of this concern, then assessment of the duty and clearance is a very, very important aspect. Assessment includes provisional assessment or it can be a reassessment or it can be nil assessment also. The nil assessment means where there is no scope for imposition of any import duty that is called the nil assessment. This assessment is made, this nil assessment is necessary for the clearance of the goods. Without this nil assessment, the port authorities will not lead the goods to the importer. Then once that is over, then the noting of the bill of entry by the customs authorities, very, very important. The, the bill of entry submitted by the importer or the custom house agent is cross check with the import manifest submitted by the person in charge which we have referred in the beginning of our presentation. If it is noted that noting of the bill of entry will be made if there is no discrepancy between the goods uh, submitted by the person in charge or uh, and uh, the, uh, the list prepared the custom authorities. In other words, bill of entry will be noted if the description of goods tallies with the import manifest submitted by the person in charge. The date of presentation of bill of entry is very relevant and the rate of duty as applicable on the date will be considered for calculating the date duty payable. However, bill of entry is accepted only after proper scrutiny vis-a-vis -vis import manifest and various declaration given. Then period end of bill of entry is very, very essential and important as I we uh, said earlier the import under the law is allowed to present, sorry, the importer 
under the law is allowed to present the bill of entry up to 30 days before the expected date of arrival of the vessel or aircraft so as to avoid payment of huge demerits. The duty will be payable at the rate applicable on the date on which entry in is granted to vessel and not the present as the bill of entry. However, the rate of exchange will be prevalent on the date of submission of the bill of exchange. Now, we are moving towards assessment of the custom duty. How, what, how the assessment is to be that we are going to see. Assessment of goods will be made after the bill of entry is filed then it, the bill of entry is sent to the appraising department and it will be appraised by the appraiser within the customs department. Appraiser of the goods, appraiser has to correctly classify the goods, the primary job of the appraiser is to correctly classify the goods and decide the value and for the purpose of the custom duty and also to find out the rate of the duty applicable and to verify that goods are not uh, imported in violation of the law or against the provisions of the law. Once the appraiser, the assessment is made by the appraiser, then the, the goods will be valued for the purpose of levying the import duty. The importer has to file declaration about the value of the goods. It is not that you know the customs of uh, uh, levy the custom duty, but it is the importer. He has to declare or declare that, that this is the value of the goods. Thereafter only the other formalities will be followed. Then thereafter approval of the assessment. The assessment made by the importer has to be approved by the assistant commissioner if the value of the imported goods is more than 1 lakh. The assessment officer should sign in full signature in the uh, bill of entry. Then thereafter there is a provision for the EDA assessment also in the electronic uh, assessment is also. In the EDA system the cargo declaration is transferred to the assessing officer in the groups electronically. Now, we are moving towards uh, the payment of the custom duty. After the assessment of the duty, necessary duty should be paid by the importer. The importer, after the payment of duty only, if the goods were already examined, then delivery of goods can be taken from the custodians, that is the porters, after paying the, their duties by the importer. On the contrary, if the goods were not examined before the assessment, and then the assessment has to be submitted for examination to the examining staff in the imported shed. After the shed appraiser gives out the charge out delivery of the stock can be taken from the custodian. These are the procedures to be. Now, then there is a system assessment also involved in this uh, process. Assessment after the examination of the goods, that is the one system itself will assess the examination of the goods. Then assessment on the basis of the documents followed by the inspection and testing of the goods by the appraiser. One is the by the examination of the goods, assessment can be made, that is the one way. Second way is that it is not necessary to go for the examination in the very first stage, only the based on the documents submitted by the uh, importer, the assessment can, can be made by the appraiser. Thereafter, further procedures will follow. If the assessment is not possible on the basis of documents submitted, inspection has to be done. Then assessment is made after the examination of the goods. This is called the first appraiser system or the first check procedure. Then the second appraiser assessment system or the second check procedure is, is, this, is also there. And under this system, assessment is made on the basis of the document submitted and thereafter goods are examined. Now, the examination of goods we are going to see. First of all, the physical examination and the quantitative checking like weighing, measuring, etc. carried out by the examiners. It is one, this is done based on the selected samples from the, uh, taken from the imported goods. Based on that, the assessment will be made, the examination will be made. Then checking of the, thereafter, the checking of the duty drawback license document that has been done. Thereafter, execution of bond and payment of the duty that has been executed for the payment of the duty. Thereafter, out of custom charge order has to be issued once the goods are examined and the duty is paid. The customs officer will issue out of uh, a customs charge order only after the formality is completed. And the finally, if the goods are not lifted from the timely, 
then the importer has to face the huge damage cost and the, that's very uh, exorbitant. Therefore, the imports generally, importer generally, they would like to lift the goods as quickly as possible. So, these are the procedure that has to be followed while importing the goods. Now, we are moving towards the export procedure. Again, in the export procedure, there are two types of the things to be followed before that. It is the the procedure for export are similar to the procedure for import of goods, of course, in reverse direction. One thing we should understand, what are the procedure followed in the import procedure, the same procedure is followed for the export procedure also, but in the reverse order. That is what the, the things will be concerned. Secondly, export is very, very important for the economy. Therefore, there should not be delay, any delay in the export of the goods any delay or stoppage of export consignment is likely to affect foreign exchange earnings of the country. Hence, exporters, exports neither could be intercepted or nor could be withheld for any reason. If at all there is any dis, uh, uh, the difficulties, then they have to get the undertaking for the exporter that nothing, the goods are in as per the law, uh, as per order only, then the, it is not, it's not in violation of the law of the land. With this undertaking, the goods has to be exported and it should not be delayed, even if there is some shortcomings or uh, the information record is not submitted fully. Now again, we move into the, what are the procedure to be followed by the person in charge of the conveyance. First of all, as I said, it's in the reverse order. The person in charge of the export of the conveyance where the goods are, by which the goods are to be exported, he should secure entry outward. In the case of import procedure, he has to get entry inward uh, order in the case because the goods has to be brought within the country. Therefore, the importer has to get the import inward order. Whereas in the case of export, the same person in charge of the conveyance, he should say get entry outward, means that is the permission to say take the goods outside the country. Then only loading to the vehicle conveyance will take place only after the outward is order is issued or granted, so as to ensure that all record formalities are completed quickly and also loading of goods starts quickly. As I, we see in this on the export order, the entry uh, inward or, uh, order is the last stage in the procedures to be followed, whereas in the case of export procedure, it will come on the top of it. Then loading with the permission, again loading the goods inside the vehicle could take place only after the bill of export or shipping bill duly passed with the custom officer is received by the person in charge of the vessel or the aircraft. Then in the case of baggage or mail bags does not require shipping bill, but permission of the custom office is required. Then the export general manifest. In the import procedure, we saw it is the import manifest. In the case of export, it is called the export manifest. Again, in the case of import or export, it is called the import or export manifest. If the goods are imported or exported through the vessel or the aircraft, on the contrary, if the import or export takes place through train or by the road, then it is called the import or export order. That the, the, you should uh, kindly keep this point in your mind. Then procedure to be followed by the exporter, steps to be initiated by the exporter. The first of all, the exporter should obtain the business identification number from the direct engine of uh, the foreign trade. It is a PAN number based number with 15 digits. Then thereafter the exporter should open a current account with a designated bank for the purpose of crediting of the duty drawback claims. And the third step to be followed is to register licenses or advanced license at the custom station uh, if exports are under the export promotion schemes. Now, Shipping bill for export either by sea or air or road has to be submitted by the exporter. Even if no duty is payable for most exports, goods have to be assessed for the duty that is called the nil duty assessment or the nil assessment, we call it as the, like that only. Then the next stage in the process of the export process is submission of shipping bill by the exporter. Shipping bill has to be submitted in four copies that the quarter will get. Then type of forms to be uh, are number one, shipping bill for export of goods under the claim for duty drawback and it should be in green color paper. 
Then the second category is shipping bill for export of dutiable goods that is in yellow color. Then shipping bill for export of duty free goods in white color. Then shipping bill for export of duty free goods X bond in pink color. These are the, the colors are very, very important and it is uh, prescribed for the purpose of easy identification. Now, the shipping bill export under a DEB scheme in, is in blue color in addition to relevant documents. This document has to be submitted along with the other several documents such as packing list, invoice, letter of credit, etc., to be submitted. Thereafter, form ARE1 in the case of excisable goods should, be, should also be submitted. Then the custom authorities will give you a serial number called a token number to shipping bill when presented. Then export formalities at the time of export. There are the certain formalities be completed by the exporter and those formalities are number one, goods cleared by the manufacturer for export to be accompanied by the ARE1 and submit to the custom authorities. The second requirement is the custom officer to certify that goods under the form have been exported. And the export form at the time of export. At the time of export, the above form have to be submitted to maritime commissioner for obtaining proof of export. After the acceptance of proof of export by the maritime commissioner, the bond executed by the manufacturer is export is thereafter the export is released. Duty drawback formalities. In the event of exporter intent to claim duty drawback on his export, then the exporter has to follow the procedure and submit the necessary papers. There are other several documents are required for the export and those things are, first of all, four copies of the commercial invoice has to be submitted or enclosed, then four copies of the packing list, it has to be enclosed or attached then certificate of origin or reshipment inspection wherever is required, then the insurance policy has to be submitted, then letter of credit, declaration of value, excise, ARE1, AR2 form as applicable, then guaranteed receipt or standard declaration forms prescribed by the Reserve Bank of India duplicate has to be submitted, then letter indicating the business indication number should also be uh, say uh, uh, made available, then we the thing is coming is the RCFC certificate form export promotion council. Then the, thereafter, the exporter has to become a member of concerned export promotion council and obtain registration membership certificate. Now, examination of goods before the export is very, very important as in the case of uh, import procedures. Export of goods are examined by the examiner after the shipping bill is passed by the export department. This inspection is necessary for the purpose of to ensure prohibited goods are not exported, goods tally with the description and invoice, duty back wherever is applicable is correctly claimed. Then let export order by the customs authorities. The customs officer to verify the, all the documents thereafter if he is satisfied that the goods are not prohibited for exports and the export duty wherever applicable is paid, then he will issue the clearance that is let ship or export order. Thereafter, then the processing under the EDI system, there is an electronic system of submitting the export all the documents also that can be followed by the exporter also. Then thereafter, the conveyance leave on the return order. Uh, the port authorities will issue order for uh, uh, leaving the, for the departure of the conveyance. That, that is the indication for the, 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 the export of the good final stages. Then the return order is issued on fulfilling the following document, return order for the departure of the vehicle is issued number one. after the submission export manifest report, submission of bill of shipping and the transshipment, payment of dues on stores consumed, then penalty is not leviable, export duty if is spelled. So these are the procedures uh, for the uh, export process concern. In a nutshell, we have seen summing up. We have seen to the import procedure to be followed by the person in charge of the vehicle and the importer himself. Similarly, in the case of uh, export procedure, the procedure has to be followed uh, by the uh, person in charge of the uh, conveyance as well as the export is concerned. Uh, this is what uh, uh, the whole thing is concerned. Now, with this, we conclude the uh, discussion. Thank you very much, please.